All right, let's start off with our first big story. The federal government is uh, considering and working very hard to spread its campaign of change and instill the change mantra of the Buhari government into all sectors of the Nigerian economy. Last year, the presidency, as in September, precisely launched the Change Begins With Me initiative to instill discipline and patriotism among Nigerians. Information Minister Lai Mohammed, whose ministry is overseeing the initiative, says the program will impart greatly on the larger society and promote Nigeria's common good and common destiny. Now, the police seem to be the first agency to champion this cause. Let's take this report now to show how the Nigeria police is making efforts to lead by example and also lay a foundation for our discussion. The aim of the visit is to deliver a lecture on Nigerian police, challenges and perspectives to participants of the National Defense College Course 25. The guest lecturer points out the major challenges currently facing the police force and the efforts made in confronting these issues. He charges officers to always be of good conduct and imbibe positive values in order to gain the confidence and acceptability of the public. The perception of the police obviously is very negative. People see the, see view the police in a negative light. And I think that's one of the challenges, that's one of the perceptions in the present, present management we are trying to address. How do we sort of evoke the confidence and support of the citizens, compassion, courage, integrity, respect for diversity, professionalism, and rule of law. When there's a complaint, when there's a problem in a particular, uh, particular locations, the police has to be accountable in their actions. These are measures that will enhance the confidence and acceptability of the police organization. While speaking on the issue of inadequate manpower and funding, the police boss appeals for a better allocation from government. He also reveals that the force is exploring ways it can generate revenue for its use and appeals to the National Assembly for the quick passage of the Police Trust Fund and the Cybercrime Bills. The yearly budget allocation to the force does not reflect the enormous size scope of responsibility and basic infrastructural requirement of the force. As the lecture wraps up, it is all commendation for Ibrahim Idris and his men for their invaluable contribution in maintaining public law and order and safeguarding lives and properties across the country. Olive Muki Onokwai, TVC News, Abuja. All right, we'll take a short break right now and return with more. Stay with us, please. Change Begins With Me is the initiative the police is taking upon themselves to be the championing or to be the arrowhead in changing the way that things are done in our society, beginning from the police. We're now joined from Abuja, an assistant, uh, assistant commissioner of police, Abayomi Shogunle. Abayomi, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, it's nice to have you on. Now, let, let us begin. Uh, the IG of police has said that uh, the perception of, of the police is very, very, very bad in its lowest ebb amongst Nigerians. Since that time that uh, the police launched the Change Begins With Me mantra at now, what has really changed? From the feedbacks um, we've been getting from members of the public, a lot has actually changed regarding the interaction and perception the citizens have about um, police officers in Nigeria. The police is uh, more open to members of the public. The police is now accountable to the public. And um, a lot has been done towards ensuring direct police citizen contact no matter what part of the country you reside in. All right, let's, let's try and take these issues one after the other, the issue of perception. Before, how would you like, I must ask you the question, what was the perception of Nigeria? How would you, in one word, how did Nigeria, how, how do Nigerians see the Nigerian police? Well, um, if we're talking about um, some period, like some, five, three, four years ago, 
um, probably it wasn't something as good as um, the public will want it to be. But let me also state that um, generally, all around the world, members of the public, citizens, they have um, reservations about their police forces and police departments. And uh, Nigeria is not an exception. And what um, the IGP Ibrahim Idris led Nigerian police force is doing is to close up the gap, the existing gap that had hitherto existed between citizens and the police. And um, from a based on um, feedbacks we're getting, I think we're trying to make things better. And I can confidently say that there's improvement regarding the perception members of the public have about Nigerian police force. So if I sum it up, it's getting better. It's good at the moment. In some part of the divide, like maybe the U.S. and some other parts of the, of the world, if you hear the cops, sometimes it's synonymous with the issue of racism. In this part of the divide, from the report we, we garner on the street, when you hear the police, the word corruption, the word brutality, are words that are banded around let's try and take one each each of these uh, areas one after the other start with corruption for instance would you say nigerian police have stopped uh collecting collecting the gunje of for, for lack of a better word right now just 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 fill us in on that let me start by saying um we have a good percentage a good number of nigerian police officers who are dedicated to their duty, who, who ensure the fight against corruption on a daily basis. But unfortunately, just as we have in every sphere of life, we have some very few bad eggs within every system. And the Nigerian police force is taking care of um, such people. Gone are the days, you know, when even if you call police for distress call police then we we have it on record like some 10 15 years ago the police will request that you supply fuel that they will use in bringing the patrol vehicles to your place or you go to the police station to make a report and um, the police will ask for what is called uh, mobilization fees but you agree with me that that has changed drastically that is no mm. longer happening well, uh, Abayomi, I may and not agree with you on that. To ensure, Ab Abayomi, I may not agree with you on that because uh, just about exactly one week from today, one week ago, we still had a, a situation where a distress call was uh, made, and there were complaints of the fact that the vehicle did not have fuel to go to wherever they're supposed to go to. So how do we how do we reconcile that? And especially in addition to that, uh, the issue of bail. When they say bail is free. We still have areas, situation where people uh, who are supposed to bail their, their relatives or whoever from the police still part with some amount of money. As regards the issue you mentioned, I will appreciate if you can give um, the details, the police station where it happened, the date and time. Because one thing we have discovered is um, based on historical prejudice, members of the public they form or they they bring up stories that never happened about the police so i will appreciate if you can be specific the name of the police station and date regarding the issue of um, bail is free one thing that has changed in all police stations in nigeria we have the pc rru poster that is the public complaint rapid response unit that is the unit which i heard we have the poster in all police stations in Nigeria in A1 size, which is visible to everybody coming into the police station that if you have a complaint regarding policing activities, phone numbers are provided and seven different platforms are provided through which members of the public can reach the Nigerian Police Authority 24-7 including weekends and i would say this is the 
first of its kind in, in Africa. So we are making improvement on that. All right, let's look at how you are motivating your, your officers and uh, men to pro promote the change initiative. Your, I, I, I mean, AIG mentioned the word uh, police fund bill before the National Assembly. Beyond that, what other uh, measures do you have in place? Well, um, I want to believe you are referring to the Inspector General of Police yes, as the IGP. Yes. And um, the the IGP, IGP Ibrahim Idris has been making that known. And um, I think it's it's only the IG that is um, competent to, to talk on the issue of funding, which he has been doing at um, different um, appropriate um, fora. Regarding uh, motivation of the officers, there are different ways which um, the police leadership is um, motivating the officers. For instance, we have an um, issue of um, promotion as at when due. And just this past week, the Inspector General of Police, um, IGP Brian Idris, approved the promotion of over 20,000 police officers who are due for promotion. That is one aspect of it. We also have um, the housing scheme for police officers to enable police officers to be homeowners. That is one part of it. We also have a um, police children's school where children and ward of police officers are allowed, are, the school fees they paid are not really as much as um, what um, other people pay. And um, we also have the national, the NHIS, that's the National Health Insurance Scheme of the federal government, which um, the Nigerian police force has keyed into it. So there are different various ways of motivating police officers. And that we are seeing in the way police officers are responding to distress call, in the way police officers have been cracking different violent crimes across the country in the recent past. All right, <clears throat> let me ask you this. Uh, talking about the Change Begins With Me campaign, what is, what is the, how is the campaign translating to the change in the police? It's just a slogan, it's just a mantra as the case may be, but how is it really, what are the tangible things to show that uh, the police is changing? To us in the Nigerian police force, the change begins with me, it's more than just a slogan. You recall that um, the Honorable Minister for Information, Lai Mohamed, came to the police force headquarters to um, launch the change begins with me at the police headquarters, that's the Nigerian police force and version. In November. And the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Ibrahim Idris, has personally been at the lead of this Change Begins With Me campaign. When we did the launching here in Abuja, the IGP was at Wuse Market where he personally distributed um, flyers containing how members of the public can reach the police authorities. Then we also saw this across all the various commands. We saw um, commissioners of police in charge of the various commands going on road shows to inform members of the public on how to interact with the police authorities, on how to lay their complaints. And from the feedbacks um, we are getting at the first headquarters, there is improvements between the relationship between the Nigerian police force and um, the members of the public. For instance, we have issues where detained suspects are granted bail without parting with any money from them. We have reported cases of police attending to distress call promptly, issue of police brutality or uh, incivility to members of the public, let me use that word, has reduced drastically 
in Nigeria even compared to what we read about the developed world? All right, about me, <clears throat> we're still going to come back on this. Let me put you on hold briefly. We'll go on a break and we'll return to continue. But we're going out on TVC Entertainment now. Viewers there can continue with the program with TVC Breakfast on TVC Nigeria on Concert Channel 418, oh, sorry, DSTV Channel 418. Go to B45 and Free TV 710. Stay with us. Now, let's give you some foundational information here. During the campaigns for the 2015 general elections in Nigeria, the All Progressives Congress adopted the change mantra to convert support from Nigerians. And ever since, the word has since featured in every aspect of this government, whether for critical reasons or for progress. President Muhammadu Buhari on September the 8th, 2016, launched the Change Begins with me campaign to the surprise of many Nigerians who felt it was not right at the time in the face of so much hardship. Some people received the news with suspicion, well, for others, it was a welcome development. According to President Muhammadu Buhari, the National Reorientation Campaign was to instill public morality, social order, civic responsibilities in Nigerians and promote Nigerian nationalism. Now, President Buhari said there was a need for Nigerians to change their ways before the much-needed change agenda becomes a reality. Now, the change campaign is championed by the National Orientation Agency, which is an arm of the Federal Ministry of Information. Now, the NOA is now deploying its robust platforms spread across the 774 local government areas, including its social media platforms and polling platform to spread the idea and instill new set of acceptable values and attitudes in Nigerians. Achieving attitudinal change in all facets of the society may prove difficult without the input of the Nigerian police and the Minister of Information and Culture recognized the role of the police force and presented top police officers with a campaign paper and what it entails. The Nigeria Police Force immediately expressed readiness to work with the Ministry of Information to enforce the Change Begins With Me initiative of the federal government. Since then, the Change Begins With Me campaign of the federal government has been launched in different police state commands to reposition the force for effective service delivery in crime prevention and control. All right, now the Change Begins With Me campaign is centered on promoting some core societal values as enshrined in the Nigerian <laughs> constitution. Now, these values could include discipline, dignity of labor, social justice, integrity, religious tolerance, self-reliance, patriotism, and so many others. This is not the first time a national orientation campaign was launched in Nigeria. As the military head of state, President Buhari, alongside his deputy, Tunde Idiagmo, launched a nationwide campaign called War Against Indiscipline between 1983 and 1985. However, the program has practically almost gone into extinction today. Mm. From 1999 to date, Buhari's Change Begins With Me is the third of such concept about national rebirth. Now, former President Lucia Gobasanjo launched of Heart of Africa to uh, President Omar Musa Yaradwas of uh, Project Rebranding Nigeria. And now, to do the right thing, Transform Nigeria campaign launched by former President Goodluck Jonathan and now President Buhari. So this is certainly not the first time such kind of uh, campaigns are coming. Now, Abayomi, I know you've been listening to us all the while. Change Begins With Me is not the first, it's not the second, it's not the third, it's not the fourth in Nigeria. What is different about this one from the previous ones that have come and gone just the same way, ending up as a slogan? Well, um, as we all know, uh, the society we live in is dynamic and um, people in um, authority at every point in time they decide on what they think is fit or the best um, the best initiative to come up with at any point in time. Talking about what is uh, different um, about what has been happening regarding the Nigerian police force at the moment let me start with the fact that part of the difference is that when we take a look at major kidnapping and violence cases in Nigeria, we'll, re we'll see that the police has cracked all 
those cases, there is no single kidnapping case that has occurred in the past one year that the police has not arrested the suspects and even recovered the ransom given. There is no major armed robbery incident that has happened in the recent past that the police have not apprehended the suspects involved. To us in the Nigerian police force, that is changed. When we look at issue of corruption, there are cases of um, allegations of um, corrupt practices during elections. Recently, the Nigerian police force arrested INEC officials involved in um, corrupt practices in River State and a staggering sum of over 110 million naira cash was recovered from them. That has never happened before. To us in the Nigerian police force, we see that as the change initiative. You are talking about rivers. There were also counter allegations against you, the Nigerian police force. One of them was that somebody was caught with a printing machine, printing fake uh, result even before the election, and that the police didn't do anything about it. And quite and other allegations against you there, talking about uh, politics and the Nigerian police. That's the beauty of democracy. We have the judiciary and the cases I've mentioned, they are in court. And if anybody has any allegation, attorney generals of the state, they have the powers to institute cases in court. So they should go ahead and institute their case in court. All right, let's also talk about the rule of law. Just the recent protest that that was a either foiled or doused by the Nigerian police, the issue of uh, having permission to protest or not. At this age and time, after quite a lot of rulings saying that doesn't really fall within your domain to give, uh, to give uh, permission to protest when crimes and violence are not really involved. But it, Nigerian police was strong about, remember the protest, what was the name again? Just by uh, the two-faced DBR protest that was oh, okay. <laughs> and, and the Nigerian police played a, plum, a prominent role in that again. Tell me how that works with your change initiative and the respect for the rule of law. I think the most important thing is um, ensuring law and order. And um, even in schools, you discover that what you are taught in the classrooms, I'm talking of um, theory now, by the time you get to the field or when you get to practicalize, you will discover that practical is completely different from theories. What has been happening differently in the Nigerian police force regarding protest, you will, when you check the records, you will see that there is no reported case of any citizen losing his or her life during protest, unlike what we've experienced in the past. To us, this is part of the change. Um, we're seeing in the Nigerian police force. And um, what the Nigerian police always say is that when you want to um, protest, protest is guaranteed, peaceful protest is guaranteed under the constitution. But not, what the Nigerian police force is saying is let's work together regarding um, designing which route you want to take so that adequate um protection can be can be provided because at every point in time we always have citizens with different viewpoints almost on a daily basis we have peaceful protests going on in abuja that's the nation's capital and the police has not um disrupted such um protest but by the time people protesting, start attacking innocent citizens, setting houses, vehicles on fire, then that is no longer a peaceful protest that is guaranteed under the Constitution. And the Nigerian police force have the constitutional duty to resolve such unacceptable conduct. All right, now, by me, uh, the change begins with me mantra or slogan. There are concerns among a section of Nigerians 
that it was originally a political slogan, it's a political idea. So bringing it into uh, a professional outfit like the police, there are lots of concerns that uh, the police, it was going to politicize the, the Nigeria police. What do you think? Well, um, as a professional police officer, I try as much as possible to stay away from political discussion. But one thing is clear, all across the world, during campaigns, you come, candidates and parties come up with what they want to do. And such candidates and parties are voted in based on what they are able to tell the citizens that they want to do. Then let me state that the police have a constitutional duty to support the programs and initiative of any or every government at the federal, state and local government level. So whatever initiative elected government officials initiate, the police have a constitutional duty to support and make sure it works. Okay, just oppose that with the interests of the people, the, the, the life of, of the Nigerian citizens and the, 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 the ideas, or so to say, the, what the agenda of the day against the people. I'm, I'm bringing back the issue of the protest again, when you, where you said they needed to take permission from you and the people said they want to protest according to, okay, Femi Falano, you can't beat a child and ask a child not to cry. You have the right to be the child as an adult, but you also don't have the right to say, okay, don't cry after you're beating that child, which was what Nigerians then were saying. But you came in and said no. Well, let me say again, what the Nigerian police force is saying is peaceful demonstration or peaceful protest is guaranteed under the constitution. We will support that. And what we are saying is anybody or any group of persons that want to protest, get in touch with the police, let's plan this together. But the moment such peaceful demonstration or protest begins to be violent, say attacking innocent citizens, looting of shops, setting fires on buildings and vehicles, then it's no longer the peaceful protest guaranteed under the constitution and the police will take appropriate measures. All right, uh, about me, let's put you on hold. We'll go on a break and then we come back to dwell more on this. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast. Glad to have you back. It is TVC Breakfast and it's our first big story this morning looking at the Change Begins With Me initiative campaign with the Nigerian police. How are the faring? Is there some change? Are there changes really with the Nigerian police? And we have with us in our Abuja studio, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Abayomi Shogunle. Uh, many thanks for staying with us still, Abayomi. We were talking about uh, politics and the Nigerian police just before we went on break. And your idea was you support whatever the administration of the day has to offer. And, and my question was, that what if it goes against the right and the will of the people, but you maintain your stance still? Okay, let's quickly look at the issue of community policing and decentralizing the police in terms of change. Uh, many experts have called for that. Is, that is, is this the right time for that change to happen, to begin with you? Let me start with the issue of um, community policing. And um, community policing, simply put, is the police at the local level, I'm talking at the divisional level, at the townships, at the villages, having collaboration with citizens and members of the public in resolving policing issues. That is, whenever there is an issue, whenever there is a problem, crime problem, the solutions are preferred in conjunction with the citizens and not just police deciding this is the way we want to do it. 
that is the concept of community policing and any police officer from any part of the country can do community policing in any part of the country and that we have been doing in Nigeria. And to further take community policing to a higher level, the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Ibrahim Idris, launched the Eminent Persons Forum, where we have, just from the name, where we have um, notable members of the public also being part of the initiative of community um, policing. And we've seen the Eminent Persons Forum being launched and the, in all the state commands and having periodic meetings with, 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 the, with the police. Issue of um, whether to decentralize the police or not, this is a political decision and um, I'm not allowed to go into political discussions. All right, uh, Abayomi, uh, when it comes to projections, I know that institutions plan and project how uh, they have to perform in fixing time frames as they get along. I, I don't know whether the police has a strategic uh, a projection in such a way that maybe in the next five years or by 2020, the police should be, the Nigeria police should be this kind of police as the case may be. Are there projections like that within the police? Of course, um, we do periodic um, pro projections in the Nigerian police force. You know, um, in the course of this program, I mentioned that um, we're in a dynamic society where if one refuses to move with the changes and um, what is happening in the society, one will be left behind. And this is part of the basis for the projections um, we have in the Nigerian police force regarding how we want to tackle issue of crime and criminal activities and providing security. And this, the Nigerian police force in doing in conjunction with different stakeholders and partners involving um, foreign embassies in Nigeria, human rights groups and um, civil society organizations. So that is happening. Yeah, th that is happening, but give us an idea. What kind of police are we expecting to see maybe by 2019 or 2020 and all of that? What kind of police? Well, the kind of police we all look forward to and working towards is having a police force that um, members of the public can really, really trust and work together with and that efforts are being put in place to ensure that. And um, in, the, in, the, in the near future, as in, I'm talking of just in some few weeks' time, um, the Inspector General of Police, IGP Ibrahim Idris, will be launching an initiative that is further bringing the citizens closer to the police. That means you can report cases, get in touch with the police without physically entering a police station. This is another giant stride that the Nigerian police force is um, taking and will be the first of its kind again in Africa where members of the public can actually report crime without stepping into a police station and the police will take it up. In the coming um, week, the appropriate unit of the force will um, start the, um, the sensitization, the pre-launching sensitization of that initiative. Yeah, after a while, we didn't hear much about your complaint unit. Is it still well and alive? Because you're talking of launching another initiative now. What happened to the complaint unit? Well and alive, and how would you rate it with your change initiative? Well, the public complaint rapid response unit is well and alive. And as the head of the unit, that's why I'm here. 
Just as we know, the Public Complaints Rapid Response Unit, PCRRU, receives complaints of police professional misconduct. Why this new initiative is reporting crime and criminal activities. So there are two different um, there, there, are, there are two different um, initiatives. We've not heard any, anything about any of your officers uh, disciplined, dismissed, apart from the Rivers um, a case that we just heard recently. Shouldn't that be the case where you name and shame, then we know who and who has, uh, has been dealt with? Well, um, we do a periodic um, report, uh, I mean, and quarterly reports at the PCRRU and the first quarter report for 2017 will be due by next month and that we're going to have details. We have new things, we have new cases that we're going to reveal to the public. Regarding the issue of uh, naming and shaming, you know, we also have to be careful because if the punishment is not dismissal, then we have a duty to keep the identity of the police officer involved. Though we, we've been informing members of the public and which the press can always check if it's true or not that so, so, so punishment has been melted out. We only release names if it is case of dismissal or where the officer has been charged to court and that has been doing. All right, now, Bayomi, uh, the, the Nigeria police has been commended when they go out for peacekeeping effort outside the country. We've heard lots and lots of uh, commendation for all police officers who go out for peacekeeping. But when they come back, the same police disciplined, upright, very agile, very, you know, strong police that goes out there it's not the same police that Nigerians have back home. What, what's the difference? What I can say regarding that, and I'm going to base it on my personal experience, is that when we travel out on foreign assignments, either with the United Nations or with the African Union, you have everything provided for you. Everything you need to work with you have them provided. You don't have to think about anything other than getting your job done. And that's why we've been performing better. And um, this is also one thing the Inspector General of Police, IGP, Brian Idris, has been saying. And um, knowing that at a point the IGP was in charge of um, policing in one of the UN uh, missions in, um, in, in Asia. And part of the reasons why the IGP is also appealing to the National Assembly to pass the um, Police Trust Fund um, Act or bill. Yeah. Because honestly, policing is a very capital intensive project. And to have an effective and the kind of um, policing we require, it goes beyond the normal budgetary allocations. And this, the IGP has been saying. Is that All what right. is also responsible for perhaps lack of proper training when it comes to issue of right, rights abuse and extrajudicial killings? Case in question, the Apple 6 ruling that just came out now, are, are you going to assure us that we will never hear that? again in the Nigerian police. Well, maybe you have to answer that when we come back from <laughs> uh, the break. Let's go on a break now and we'll come back to dwell more on this. But don't forget that top of the hour will be time for us to go for the news update with Azizat Olaunua. Stay with us on TVC. Glad to have you back. We are watching TVC Breakfast and we are looking at the Change Initiative campaign by the Nigerian police, adopted by the Nigerian police. It is of the federal government and uh, Abayo Mishogunle is with us in our Abuja studio. Abayo, we are wrapping up this particular segment now, but quickly your, your take on the issue of uh, trainings and extrajudicial killings. 
Well, um, uh, you, you made use of the word um, proper training. You know, in a world where we have different school of thoughts, I think we should be talking of um, appropriate training because there is nothing like proper. But when we talk of pro um, appropriate training, yes, Nigerian police officers are given appropriate trainings to enable them to perform their jobs. Looking at extrajudicial killings, you know, when we look at what we see happening around the world, even in the most developed world, then we can't use that word, extrajudicial killing, with the Nigerian police force because there is no evidence to, to, to support that. But be it as it may be, the Nigerian police force, in partnership with our developmental partners, are ensuring that our officers are being trained and given appropriate human rights training in conjunction with um, foreign embassies as well. We just had the recent one in collaboration with the UK High Commission here in Nigeria regarding officers who are posted in um, the Northeast um, region. The Swiss Embassy, the American Embassy, they are also partnering with the Nigerian Police Force regarding this. And this is also being carried out at various police training institutions across the country. All and right, Abayomi. That's why we are not having so many cases. All, all right, Abayomi, Shogun, I have to uh, stop you there because with time is against us. But we must thank you very much for uh, talking with us and spending the whole morning discussing the change initiative within the Nigeria Police. Thank you very much for coming on the program.